welcome to On the Edge with J.P. Divine from Central Maine Sunday. On the Edge with J.P. Divine Audio is made possible by our subscribers like you. Thank you for listening and supporting local journalism in Central Maine. Now here's J.P. Divine. The last tie. My first tie was white. It was for my first communion, a Catholic ceremony where even the very poor get to shine. Now, everything in a Catholic ceremony is white. Socks, shirt, rosary, and personal Bible. It's something, I think, to do with purity. Next was my confirmation. That's where you get a saint's name, in case the first one didn't take. As I was still pure, I wore a white tie again. My sister Rita had to tie it for me. My dress-up outfits as a child were, were all about jackets with a big collar of a neat white shirt folded out over the coat. School days? Uh, there were T-shirts and shorts. Simple days. Now, Ties have always been the standard gift for all occasions. Christmases, birthdays, mitzvahs, both bar and bat. Now, your wife, mother, or girlfriend just went to the store, grabbed a tie, and put it under the tree. One Christmas in Japan, my mother sent me a tie with pipes and hunting dogs on it. True story. There were the ties for the weddings, four of my brothers, two for my sister's weddings. Somehow they were all standard navy blue silks, and they all came off at the open bar. Now, Alan Powers, a movie usher, loaned me his snap-on bow tie for Mary Lister's junior prom. There's a handsome photo of that night somewhere. I wish I had it now. The Air Force changed everything from weekly haircuts to daily press shirts to the standard blue tie that had to be tucked in over the last button above the belt. Ugh. The service meant four boring years of khaki. You know, all girls like guys in uniform, except for prison guards, who I believe don't wear ties or white. Life in the theater in the 50s really changed my tie collection. I I always kept one in my pocket for commercials and auditions. My tie rack went from black knit to big paisley swirls to thin ones, little polka dots, too wide, extra wide, and back to skinny black knit, like the one in the picture. Now, my jobs in the hotel world from the Plaza to the Warlord feature the house uniform of blue blazer and dark tie. Between those jobs, I rented a tux complete with a Cary Grant bow tie, yes, at the men's fashion counter at Bloomingdale's department store in Manhattan, where I sprayed cologne on shocked passersby. Uh, Occasionally, I got slapped. Now, one day, the, the advent of turtleneck, Casual jacket and short, neat haircuts put me on the streets of Manhattan with a cool Steve McQueen swagger. That led to the black sweater and peacoat of the beatnik era and the actor's studio years where ties were frowned upon. Now, if you really needed one for a wedding, you could buy one from the peddler on the corner of 48th Street and 7th Avenue along with a plastic comb and a dollar watch. Oh, now when the judge's daughter I met on the Bloomingdale's escalator cleaned up my act and bussed me up to Maine to meet her Republican family, I had to get serious. It was in that small college town that clothier Howard Miller at Levine's Men's Store sold me a Republican seersucker suit, a white shirt, a pair of white bucks, and white tie. You know what? Uh, I'm going to throw that thing away. 
Anybody want to buy a ragged old tie? Thanks for listening to On the Edge with J.P. Devine. On the Edge with J.P. Devine audio is made possible by our subscribers like you. Thank you for supporting local journalism in Central Maine.